these pronouns which are only six in English in Arabic we have 14 let us look at them so in as I said in Arabic we start from third person and uh, in third person in Arabic is called a ghaib ghaib basically means absent but absent doesn't have to be totally absent from the place where the conversation is taking place ghaib basically means absent from conversation so ghaib is not part of conversation um, while the mukhatab which is second person is part of the conversation so third person which is ghaib in Arabic it will be either Muzakkar or Muannis and then we have Wahid, Tasniya and Jama singular, dual and plural so if we start from third person we will say Huwa which is he and Hiya which is she equivalent in English Huwa, he, Hiya, she and then for Tasniya we have Huma, those two men and Huma, those two women and plural we will have Hum, they all men and Humna, they all women so we have six pronouns here for third person Huwa, Huma, Hum, Hiya, Huma, Hunna so six for third person and then similarly for second person which is called Mukhatib or Hazir in Arabic the person who is present who we are talking to whether that's one person or more than one person so again we have six here Anta you one person masculine and Anti you one person feminine and then for dual we have Antuma two men and antuma two women and many men antum and many women antunna so that's anta you one man antuma you two men antum you all men and anti uh, there's a minor difference here really anta and anti anti you one woman Antuma, you two women, and Antumna, you all women. So I'm talking to all. If I'm talking, if there's a group of women, I'm talking to women only. Then I will say Antumna. And when it comes to first person, um, in Arabic uh, we have only two. Then just like English, uh, this is I. Ana, I. And Nahnu, we change the color so Anna is I and Nahnu is we in Arabic uh, they do not tend to use Nahnu Nahnu otherwise it will be Anna Nahnu Nahnu uh, there will be actually 15 rather than 14 but for some reason uh, for first person Nahnu is used both for two as well as for plural and uh, while Anna is for one person so Anna if I am talking I will say Anna if uh, a woman is saying something she will say Anna so Anna is basically I and Nahnu we if two women are talking they will say we and if many women are talking they will say we and similarly two men we and many men that will be we as well uh, and it kind of makes sense because if uh, on a stage two men are talking to a group they will say we and if there are 10 women, men standing on, on, a, on a stage, they will say we. Similarly, two women and many women standing on a stage talking to a group of people, they will say we, we. So it kind of makes sense as well that in first person we have only two, which is Anna for singular and Nahnu for kind of dual as well as plural. So this chart, let's remove this from here. So this chart is really something which we have to either memorize or by somehow have a 
photographic memory of it. Those persons who kind of tend to have photographic memory, it's easy for them to have a sketch of that in their mind and uh, are really then by some hope commit to memory that um, if I say on my right hand there are men on on my left hand there are women so I can say um, who are kind of say on the, that side okay the camera who are whom whom he ya huma hunna anta antuma antum anti antuma antunna ana nahnu kind of thing so it's a way of memorizing and when we will look at examples it will become quite clear and it will become easy to memorize that way um, some people sing say it by singing i i heard and listened to one lecturer who was kind of singing it and he was quite of doing quite a good job of it really and that is one way of uh, committing something to memory by singing um, but otherwise um, I'm kind of person who tend to have photographic memory and I will just remember this chart I will have a sketch of that chart in my mind so hua huma hum hiya huma hunna anta antuma antum anti antuma antunna ana nahnu 14 pronouns